Tonight, we're going back to the low country with slow cooker jambalaya. Hey everyone, and welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight, we're going back to the low country with jambalaya. This time, I'm making it my slow cooker, which makes life a lot simpler for me. As always, the ingredients list is on the screen, and the full recipe can be found at homestylecookingwithjen.com. If you're enjoying this video so far, go ahead and hit the like button. It really does help out with the algorithm. And if you enjoy recipe videos and the occasional grocery haul, hit the subscribe button so you never miss a video. And if you have any food-related questions, as always, you can leave a comment comment down below and I'll get to as many as I can. Who knows, you may be featured in a future video. All right, let's get started. This really is a chop and dump style recipe, so it's a good idea to have your crock pot close to you. That way you can clean off your cutting board by transferring your ingredients into your crock pot bowl. One more pro tip is to have multiple cutting boards. I have my large cutting board that is in all my videos, and then I have smaller cutting boards that are really cheap, so I don't mind throwing them into the dishwasher. Even though it will damage them, they're worth replacing. I use the smaller cutting boards for meat, hence why I put them in the dishwasher, and the larger cutting board for vegetables and things that I don't have to worry about cross-contamination. Keep your kitchen healthy, and you'll keep your family healthy. Okay, let's get started with the recipe for real. What I've been doing on the screen is cutting a pound of andouille sausage, on the bias and then putting it in the crock pot. I'm using a seven quart crock pot. This makes enough for 12. Don't worry if you don't have a family or a crowd big enough coming over to eat it all. This freezes really well and you can save it for later. Continue slicing your sausage until all of the pieces are in the crock pot. Then remove your small cutting board and we can go on to the next step. The next step is to add the chicken to the crock pot. I cubed this earlier so you wouldn't have to watch me dress the chicken. I give everything a good stir. Now we'll do this throughout the ingredients process. There is a ton of ingredients going into this bowl, so I want to make sure that everything is well combined. The next thing into the crock pot are the tomatoes. Don't drain them. You want the juice and all. Give your mixture another good stir and make sure the meat is completely coated with the tomatoes and the tomato juice. Now it's time for the Holy Trinity. You can't have a low country or Cajun dish without it. And no, this hasn't become a religious channel on the sly. In this instance, the Holy Trinity consists of onions, celery, and bell pepper. It is the foundation of most Cajun, low country, and Creole dishes, and it really gives gives your jambalaya a distinct and authentic flavor. You guys have seen me chop onions a couple of times on this channel, but for those of you that are new and are a little intimidated by them because they make you cry, here are a few tips uh, to make the onion cutting process a lot easier and less painful. For chopped onions, I tail both ends and get the paper part of the outer skin off. Then I take my knife and I draw it about three quarters of the way through the onion, both horizontally and vertically. And then I just cut across all of the pieces and that gives me chopped onions. It's really simple and it allows me to cut a whole onion very quickly. On the flip side, it also saves me from tears. One other trick I use is to just hold my mouth open. That works for me, but if your eyes are super sensitive, then you may want to try using a food processor. It is much quicker than cutting the onions manually, and since the onion is contained in the food processor bowl, it eliminates any possibility of tears. Now the onions are in the crock pot, it's time to give them a good stir and make sure they're incorporated throughout the meat and the tomato mixture. Now it's on to the second part of the Holy Trinity, and that's the bell pepper. Traditionally, green bell peppers are used, but any color will do. Just use your imagination. Bell peppers are incredibly easy to chop. Just make sure that you get all of the seeds and the membranes out of the center, and then chop them in half, and just run your knife through them. Really, it's as simple as that. I'm going to speed this up for a little montage, because we're not done chopping. 
Once all the bell peppers are in the crock pot, again, give them a good stir. We want to make sure that everything is completely combined. We are almost done chopping. All, the only thing we have left to do is the last part of the Holy Trinity, and that is the celery. It's pretty simple to chop the celery for this. Just cut off any brown pieces, then slice it down the center, and run your knife through it. Again, I'm going to speed this up so we don't have to watch me chopping for 20 hours, and then it's on to the seasoning. Once you have all of the celery in the crock pot, it is time to give it a good stir. And as you can see, it's starting to get a little difficult because the ingredients is becoming a little heavy, but that's okay. That's one of the advantages of stirring as you go. Okay, now it's time for the flavoring. Add an entire can of broth to your crock pot. You can use homemade broth. I just didn't have any on hand. The can works just as well. Give everything a good stir and now it's on to the herbs. You want to add your oregano, parsley, Cajun seasoning, cayenne pepper, and thyme to your crock pot. Then give everything a good stir to make sure the flavor is distributed evenly throughout your entire mixture. One point about using herbs in crock pot cooking, use dried herbs instead of fresh. One reason for this is the dried herbs bloom a lot slower than the fresh herbs and the fresh herbs cannot withstand the intense heat over over a long period of time like the dried herbs can. The last seasoning to add to the crock pot is good old-fashioned salt and pepper. Remember to add it to taste but never forget it. Again give the ingredients a good stir and now it's time to cook. Only thing left to do is cover with a lid and cook on low for seven and a half hours. After your jambalaya has been cooking on low for seven and a half hours, take off the lid, add your shrimp, give it another good stir to make sure that your shrimp is distributed evenly throughout your mixture, and then put the lid on for approximately 10 to 15 minutes. What we want is the shrimp to defrost a little bit and begin cooking, before we add our rice. After about 10 to 15 minutes, add your rice and then finish cooking for the final 20 odd minutes. Be careful, you don't want to overcook your shrimp. So I would check it every 10 minutes or so to make sure that your shrimp is cooked, but not rubbery. And as always, give everything a good stir before you put the lid back on. After the final 20 minutes, remove the lid and it's time to eat. Plating your jambalaya is extremely simple. Just plop a couple of ladlefuls in a bowl and it's time to dig in. So I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and as always, well fed.